And you know, we're beginning a little bit earlier than uh, before we did uh, yesterday's uh, start of the Liberty Awards, but uh, that's just how things go sometimes. And we're going to add a little bit onto this uh, Liberty Awards. I'll explain right after I put up my uh, Patreon. The Patreon is just for anybody who wants to donate, goes to help me with my. Uh, cost for disability and to help go to pay for the channel as for other things as well and I'm putting it in the chat it's also in the bottom of the uh, uh, the description as well and we're going to put that in there and uh, you can just go to the page with it and you'll see what uh, that goes towards and with this one we're going to basically uh, the thing we uh, uh, this is for honorable mentions. This is basically people who are uh, have a career rating for holding up the Constitution of 80% or greater. I decided to add on, uh, on top of that a historical uh, one as well for uh, the best and for the worst. I decided to, uh, because for the best, I decided to take on uh, the same idea of what we did for the top awards which is 90% or greater, We uh, and I found two people who fit that uh, award. And then we found, uh, and then we uh, grabbed the worst, which is we took the worst possible score. And this is above 0% uh, percent because those people are usually uh, people filled in for a part of a term and most likely did not get uh, an actual appropriate uh, vote or just end up voting on a couple of things and they didn't get an essential an essential appropriate uh, score reading, so they end up being at 0%. So we go to the next level above that, and the lowest level uh, you'll see with uh, those people will go with uh, that group to fit for those people. Now, for, the, for this, we're probably going to go with those historical people first, and we'll go with the uh, worst people first. This is kind of like a... Uh, uh, we'll give these uh, things of kind of like the uh, uh, I guess that would go if equal to like in film the Razzies type of award in this case because this is going to be for his historical uh, a historical tyranny award for these uh, these people who are not uh, in office anymore and the, the, these are actually the lowest uh, scores totally uh, first of all is uh, Debbie uh, Halverson out of Illinois out of the 11th district she was succeeded by Adam uh, Kinsinger uh, she's uh, she served the uh, the district from 2009 to 2011 and uh, so that would be two two uh, two terms during that period she was a Democrat from uh, she's Democrat born in Chicago Heights which is on the uh, south side um, I'm out of Robert Morris, which is uh, then a Prairie State College and then probably to Governor State College as well. She lists three different ones. Um, and when it comes down to it is she's, uh, she basically, uh, she was able to win on uh, on on the ticket, and basically because of the way she was, she just uh, was uh, she's uh, that's when she was able to serve. So uh, she was able to uh, win in two thousand eight. So that would be nine and ten, or no, she so she only served one term. So it would be uh, uh, so for. Uh, nine and uh ten uh and then going out on eleven so she served one one full term and then she served from uh ninety seven to two thousand nine as a state senator and she's she uh along with this other person she actually put up a score of five percent which shows that she basically ninety five percent of the time she voted against the constitution the actual uh uh, document she was actually sworn to uphold when she actually got into office. Not saying that uh, Adam Kinsinger is any better. He actually just uh, 
he, along with a few other people like uh, Devin Nunes, were actually ones that just missed the list, not by much, to actually uh, be put on the uh, list for their side for uh, getting the uh, at, getting the uh, thing for the uh, tyranny award. Uh, you see with the uh, thing with it, and uh, uh, we have Halverson, who uh, who is potentially tied with uh, the Tony Resco case, and uh, and it just goes down the way that that she was essentially uh, kind of like the bottom of the barrel. Work third. Uh, I mean, she was ba basically kind of like the. N nothing much uh, when it came down to it uh, for actually under uh, understanding uh, much of uh, of the politics. It seemed like she just ended up uh, more as kind of working her way up through. And it looks like she's ended up getting friends in, the, in good places that, and that's probably why she ended up getting where she was. Now we go to the other one that is uh, Richard Bryan. Now he was the other one. He's he's also uh, used to be uh, the governor of Nevada as well. He was actually a senator uh, from eighty nine to two thousand one. He was su uh, succeeded by John Ensign. He also produced a uh, uh, his uh, five percent rating is actually quite amazing and. As expected, he was a Democrat during his whole life, from 71 on to present. And it's quite amazing that he's been able to, he was able to produce this. And he was governor from 83 to 89, and then he went uh, chairman on select committee on ethics, which is, I consider, just, uh, uh, just astounding. He was replaced by Mitch McConnell. Which you can say all you want about Mitch McConnell, but going from a five percent uh, number all the way up to a uh, all the way up to a level of sixty uh, percent is still a huge gain for following the Constitution, and I think you can declare that as at least somewhat of a win. And I think we can declare that. Uh, them getting him out at least in 2001 was at least somewhat of a victory. I mean, they haven't done much better with it out in Nevada as we see as we've gone over currently, but we can at least say that uh, at least anything's better than b the bottom of the barrel. And we see that. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, it, even in the case with it, uh, there was even stuff that basically is that he he was even uh, what do you call it? He even had uh, problems with the idea of I mean, he had problems with what, uh, with Obama as well as other people, and uh, and basically we're talking that uh, so he was essentially, I mean, and as you can see as much about Obama as you want, but and when we start to look at Obama's score, Obama's score is about twenty percent, actually four times his score on the uh, when Obama was senator. And you could say that what it called anything you want about Obama with it, but the fact is, is it's much better than this bottom of the barrel. This is this, this is not the type of person who you want to actually have uh, representing uh, your uh, your state or anything close to it. 
And as you see with it, he was on the U.S. Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, exactly why you would have actually had something like this. And as, as I stated uh, yesterday when we were talking about those people who essentially had the lowest scores, they're always going to be on these select committees for intelligence, specifically because they had these low scores, and they're going to be the most likely to abuse uh, to abuse the actual rights of the citizens and be against uh, the actual people. Uh, then that's why we have them like this. Now the ones who aren't are going to be when we get to these next people. We're going to go with the first one, which is the lower score, which is uh, Paul Brown. He was a congressman out of uh, Georgia, out of the 10th district. He served from 2007 to 2015. He was succeeded by uh, Jody Heiss. And if you look at his score historically, his score historically is a 93%. And that, that's why we're going with these uh, immensely high scores. Um, he basically, uh, when you look at his numbers with it, they were just uh, outstanding. And you'll see that uh, he was essentially one of these people to uh, uh, essentially, uh, it's uh, to basically run to uh, basically be pro-liberty and uh, he's essentially, uh, if you look at his record, you can see that he's has this uh, very, very high score of 93%. This is right in the realm of right between Mike Lee and those like Justin Amash and uh, Rand Paul. Now when we start to go with uh, the next one, you'll see that this is uh even higher and that is uh Rand Paul's father Ron Paul which is uh which the only two that have been any higher than him have actually been uh the cases of Thomas Massey at 99% and uh Lesko from Arizona 100% but Lesko is still very very new to the position so the only uh, one with any type of experience that is any higher uh, of a score is Thomas Massey. So when we have this, we can see that Ron Paul is, was notoriously known for an unbelievably high score. Born in uh, Pittsburgh, just like his son was. Um, political parties he's been associated with both the libertarian and republican parties uh libertarian from uh, uh republican before 87 then libertarian 87 to 96 um 96 to 2015 for republican then libertarian back again 2015 to present and uh he's been pro-liberty his uh his whole life and uh what it comes down to it is uh, he's been succeeded by Randy Weber. If you look at the uh, scores on Weber, we can pretty much guarantee that Weber's are going to be a far cry, which is only at 70%. We can see that that's gone down 27%. But it's nearly impossible to say we're going to... Yeah, we're going to basically try and keep up with the uh, record of uh, Ron Paul. That's something that's not even anywhere close to being attainable. And it's you're really trying to keep up with the record of someone who is right at the top of the list and being one of the best out there. Um, he works currently with his uh, with Daniel McAdams for the Ron Paul Institute. Him and Daniel McAdams also have the Ron Paul Liberty Report that they do uh, daily uh, at about 11 o'clock uh, in the morning Central Time uh, that goes on YouTube every day from Monday through Friday, uh, except for the uh, not on the weekends. And that they also uh, they also have their uh, liberty conferences that they run occasionally, and uh, he also will do his uh, weekly reports as well. 
Now we'll also go into the idea of we need to go to the people who have had the uh, best scores uh, from the actual current uh, Congress. Now we're going to go from the lowest to the highest. We'll go with uh, first is out of uh, uh, South Carolina. We I believe it's, or no, let me ch double check that. Yeah, South Carolina, we have uh, Jeff Duncan. Now Jeff Duncan has a score of... Uh, uh, 80, which is actually uh, quite good. He actually came into office in uh, 2011 during the Tea Party uh, run. 53 years old, Republican, out of uh, was born uh, Greenville. Uh, was born in 66, so he's 53 years old. Uh, has bachelor's out of Clemson. Um. He walked on as wide, wide receiver for, for the football team. Uh, and then uh, he also inspired him to come up with, with his idea for a blog at first for uh, where he calls it walk on legislator. Where he used to con uh, communicate with constituents uh, serving in the South Carolina General Assembly. Um, we start to look at uh, his thing is he has, uh, he's gotten uh, uh, awards, Club for Growth, Defender of Economic Freedom Award, Freedom Works, uh, Freedom Fighter Award, uh, Family Research Council, True Blue Award, uh, Active American National Security Patriot Award. So we can see that he's essentially has been quite good. Um, He's a member of the Freedom Caucus, which would be, uh, that tends to align with more of the uh, Tea Party people. Um, and he, he's uh, right there at the 80%, which is, which is actually doing a pretty good job. Uh, when we get to the next person, you'll, uh, the next person is uh, Jim Jordan. And he is out of uh, Ohio. Uh, representing the 4th District. He's been, uh, he's the ranking member of the uh, Oversight Committee. Um, he's been serving since 2007, actually came in before that point for the U.S. House of Representatives, been serving the, uh, was serving the Ohio uh, State Senate from uh, 01 to 06. Ohio uh, House of Representatives from 95 to 2000 uh, and uh, born in 64, so he's 55 years old. Uh, went to University of Wisconsin, uh, Madison, Ohio State for his uh, master's and uh, Capital University for his Juris Doctorate. Also produces the same amount. He's been the Freedom Caucus, uh, the Congressional Constitutional Caucus, Congressional Western Caucus, and U.S. Japan Caucus. So uh, when we see that thing, he produces a good uh, rating as well. We see when he's uh, run, we see he pretty much has had a uh, an easy time versus his uh, opponents because he's produced no less than uh, I believe it's a 58.35% is the lowest percentage that he's ever produced to get into office and that was back in 2012 his highest percentage was back in uh, 2004 for the Ohio Senate and that was at 79.27 percent so as you see that he's pretty much a shoe in no matter uh, what he does with it uh, for the election and it's it's been a pretty stable position because of his high percentage for being pro-liberty 
Now we go on to the next one up for these uh, uh, for these honoraries. We're going to skip the, past the one that passed away with it. We're going to go up to the next one up. And that would be uh, going up to... Let's see. Uh, is Bill Posey out of Florida. He produces an uh, 84% uh, for the Constitution. He's been serving the uh, U.S. House of Representatives 8th District from 2009 uh, and on. Um, before that was in the Florida, uh, Florida Center from 2000-2002. Or, or actually, sorry, 2000, 2008 was right before that. And Florida, uh, Florida House of Representatives from 92 to 2000. And uh, he was born uh, December 18th, 1947, 71 years old. Uh, uh, born Washington, D.C., Republican. Went to Brevard County, uh, Brevard uh, Community College. Uh, has an uh, associate in arts there, which is kind of unique with it that uh, that we see this. Usually, we we find uh, guys with a minimum of bachelors in the thing, but it doesn't necessarily state that you have to have this to be pro uh, uh, to be uh, to be pro liberty or any of these things. So when we see that uh, his uh, rating, we see that he actually has an 84% uh, rating when it comes down to uh, defending the Constitution from a historical career, which is not bad. It shows that he's actually pretty good. Um, he, could, uh, he could improve to get up to that 90 uh, rating with it, but he's going to have to uh, start changing some things around. Now next we're going to... Uh, next we have uh, Tom McClintock from California. He's out of California's 4th District, assumed in 2009 preceded by John Doolittle. Um, he's 62 years old, originally from White Plains, New York, Republican. Uh, he has his bachelor's out of uh, University of California, Los Angeles, so UCLA. Um, he's essentially has been uh, uh, Actually, if you look at his percentages, you'll see that he's actually uh, has been a uh, big proponent for uh, liberty in his career, because you're not going to get a number that that's that high at 86 percent without that. That means he's right off that number that he needs. He only needs about four percent up to make it to be one of those top members and get into that 90 plus percent club. Now we get to the uh, top one they're going to discuss, which is going to be uh, for the uh, living members, which is going to be from uh, Arizona, which is the 5th District, which is uh, Andy Biggs. He started assuming uh, office in uh, 2017, uh, preceded by Matt Salmon, and uh, he was, uh, before that, from 13 to 17, he was in the Arizona Senate uh, for as the president, 13 to 17, also Arizona Senate, uh, 13th, uh, 12th District, um, member of the Arizona Senate, 22nd District, from 11 to 13. Arizona House of Representatives 22nd District um, from 2003 to 2011. And we see 60 years old from Tucson, Arizona, Republican, 
uh, wife Cindy has six kids, uh, went to BYU for his education, uh, University of Arizona for his doctorate, AS, uh, oh, it's ASU, uh, uh, out, ASU, and then, uh, I guess it says Phoenix with it, oh, oh ASU out in Phoenix for his, uh, master's, so he went to BYU, then he went to, uh, ASU, then he went to, uh, University of Arizona for his doctorate, yeah, and then you, uh, And then when it comes down to it is we see that his uh, numbers are at are at way up at 87%. So he's only 3% away from making that top level. He's the one that basically is closest to just barely missing. Then when we get for uh, now we go down to the uh, actual one that's uh, just barely missing the... Uh, that this the that actually passed away this year. This is Walter Jones. He's out of uh, North Carolina now. He ended up passing with a now now his score is actually at eighty one percent, and uh, he end up uh, passing because of uh, I believe the cause was uh, I. I forgot what the actual cause was on him. Uh, let me check. Uh, yeah, he had ALS that ended up. Uh, he suffered from ALS and it led to his uh, dis uh, led to his death. Uh, he ended up breaking a hip, uh, breaking hip in uh, January, and on January uh, 26th, uh, he had been admitted to hospice care on February 10th. On a 76, uh, he died on February 10th uh, of this year, uh, out in uh, Greenville. Uh, and at his funeral, they had uh, they had uh, they had revealed that he suffered from ALS uh, in months leading up to his death. Um, basically, with his career is, he uh, was basically a person that initially started out being a uh, neoconservative in earlier on with it. Then once he realized that he had been lied to in the uh, Iraq War, on the uh, from people like John Bolton, from people like uh, Dick Cheney from people like Benjamin Netanyahu and from people uh, like Colin Powell. He actually had uh, changed his actual uh, ideas of, be of that because he did not want to send people off to a war when the actual intelligence was based on lies. And uh, <clears throat> this actually had changed his actual perspective. Now, if you look at historically before 94, he was a Democrat. After 94, he's a Republican. And basically, after he had learned, after the uh, uh, Iraq war was built on lies, he had uh, essentially uh, changed his whole uh, uh, perspective on... Um, the way uh, he viewed all of these, uh, the way he would view all of uh, all of the things for uh, war, and he basically ended up going in with guys like uh, Justin Amash and uh, other ones like uh, he ended up working with guys like Ron Paul, Justin Amash, Thomas Massey. And these were the people, and he basically uh, ended up uh, essentially later in life blaming him, uh, almost blaming himself. And he would actually go out to the hospitals and actually uh, essentially apologize for his early votes in these things. And uh, if you look like basically in April 2017, Jones criticized U.S. involvement in Saudi led. Uh, Intervention in uh, Yemen, highlighting the Al Qaeda in Yemen, has emerged as de facto ally of Saudi 
uh, led uh, militaries whom uh, Trump administration aims as partner more closely. Uh, I mean, basically, is he's he essentially basically uh, became a very very big anti-war person, and that's what he essentially uh, became. He essentially trans transitioned from uh, basically this person who essentially uh, was one of the uh, basic one of these people who was an ally for uh, a lot of intervention was actually pretty much one of the biggest neocons at first. Thus, the actual sc score only at about eighty-one percent. Then it fl then it flipped, and he became essentially one of these people that said, "I don't really care if I get reelected or not." In his position, he was going to stand on his ethics, and what he noticed is that his actual uh, percentage for election went up and it skyrocketed when uh, when he actually took these stands on these things, and uh, you know his district is highly uh based on milit uh on military members he realized that they appreciated it that he actually took a store uh, took a stand on these all of these things and he was essentially a major member in this uh liberty caucus the american conservative uh union ended up rating him low because of his uh uh, consistently rated him low because he uh, would not support uh, their pro-war uh, agenda. And if you look at the American Conservative Union, it's basically, if you look at uh, their group, you'll see that they are actually uh, uh, pretty much their idea is on foreign policy. It uh, tends to be more the idea of uh, of the uh of a lot of intervention and a lot of the other garbage like that and the, they'll basically they'll they'll tend to uh focus on a lot of intervention so they're not really conservative by any stretch of the imagination uh he so people like him with it tend to even though they had a low score with him with it they are he was essentially uh praised by his uh Praised by the peers that actually love liberty, and he ended up uh, developing, becoming a board member of the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity, even after uh, his early career of becoming a neoconservative and flipping. And it's uh, quite unique that uh, that you find someone that's willing to actually uh, flip and actually learned from their actual mistakes earlier in their career and he's one he was one of those people that actually was able to do this and that was one of those things uh that need to be understood and that end up uh showcasing how much uh of a of a positive legacy that he ended up leading in his career and uh Hopefully, there's there will be more that he will be remembered as a pro liberty person, and there will be more of people like him in that group. And that uh, we won't have to remember people. We won't end up getting more people like uh, Debbie Halverson and Richard Bryant in the future. And we're going to uh, start developing more people like Walter Jones, Ron Paul. Paul Brown uh, and more like that out there that we actually need to get and that we need to get more of these people who actually want to actually embrace liberty because when we get these people who just don't really care about the Constitution it makes things really really bad because the fact is is when we see these people who have sub 20% uh, scores it shows they don't even care I mean, when they can get that low, I mean, there's, and pretty much almost, uh, pretty much almost every state has one. I mean, Alabama has one that's, uh, uh, lower than 20%. They have Terry Sewell, who's lower than 20%. Um, 
Arizona has uh, Tom O'Halloran uh, under 20%. They also have uh, uh, Kristen uh, Cinema, who's under 20%. Um, California, uh, Diane Feinstein under 20%. John Garamendi uh, under 20%. They have uh, Amy Barra under 20%. Jerry uh, McNerney uh, under 20%, uh, and Nancy Pelosi, uh, Jimmy uh, Panetta, uh, Salud uh, Kerbajal, uh, uh, or something like that, uh, Julia Brownlee, Adam Sh uh, Schiff, uh, Pete Aguiar, uh, Norma Torres, Raul Ruiz. Uh, we keep going down. Uh, Scott Peters, as we've discussed, being one of the worst. Michael Bennett from Colorado. Uh, Ed uh, Perlmuter from Colorado as well. Richard Blumenthal. Uh, Chris Murphy from Connecticut. Uh, we also have uh, James Himes from Connecticut. Chris Coombs, Tom Carper, and Lisa Blunt, uh, Rochester, all from Delaware. On the Florida, we have uh, Al Lawson, we have Stephanie Murphy, uh, Val uh, Demings, we have uh, Charlie Christ, we have uh, Kathy Castor, we have uh, Lois Frankel, we have uh, Theodore uh, Deutsch, we have uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Georgia, we have uh, actually nobody from Georgia, so they're lucky. Hawaii has uh, Brian Schatz, Maisie, and Maisie Hirono. Illinois, Dick Durbin, uh, Tammy Duckworth, uh, Mike Quigley, uh, Raja Krishna uh, Morthy. Uh, Bradley Schneider, uh, so Brad Schneider, uh, Bill Foster, and Sherry Bustos. Uh, Indiana has uh, Andre Carson. Nobody from Iowa. Nobody from Kansas. Nobody from Kentucky. Uh, Louisiana has nobody. Maine has Angus King. Maryland has uh, Ben Cardin. It has uh, C. Uh, Ruppersberger, uh, uh, Anthony Brown, uh, Steny Hoyer, Il uh, Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Seth Moulton, Michigan, Gary Peters, uh, Debbie Stabenow, uh, Debbie Dingle, uh, Minnesota, uh, Amy Klobuchar at a whopping 10%. Um, I mean, you keep getting these ones. I mean, these ones are sub 20% and they're pathetic. I mean, um, uh, Nevada, Catherine uh, Cortez Masto, that was one of the ones that had uh, the, that was actually the one that had the lowest score in all of, uh, in all of the legislature at 7%. You have Jackie Rosen, uh, Margaret Hassan uh, at 14%, 8% for uh, Janine Shaheen, who is actually tied with, uh, uh, with, uh, Kane from Virginia. Um, New Jersey, Bob Menendez, Cory Booker, David, uh, David Norcross, uh, Josh uh, Gottheimer, uh, Albio Sires, uh, Martin Heinrich from uh, New Mexico, uh, Ben uh, Lujan or Lujan from uh, New Mexico as well. Kirsten Gillibrand and uh, Chuck Schumer from New York. Thomas uh, 
Sozi, S O S U O Z Z I, uh, Kathleen Rice, we've already talked about. Um, Elliot Engel, Nina uh, Lau, uh, Lowy, uh, Sean Maloney, uh, Brian Higgins, all from New York. Uh, from North Carolina, George Butterfield, David Price, uh, Alma Adams, um, North, North Dakota doesn't have anybody, uh, Ohio, uh, Joyce Beatty, Oklahoma doesn't have anybody, uh, Oregon, uh, Ron Wyden, Jeff Murky, Merkley, uh, Pennsylvania, Robert Casey, uh, Brendan Boyle, Dwight Evans, Rhode Island, uh, John Reed, Sheldon Whitehouse, uh, Tennessee does not have anybody, uh, Texas, Eddie Johnson is the lone person in Texas that has a sub 20%. Um, Utah has nobody, uh, Vermont, uh, Patrick Leahy, uh, Virginia, Mark Warner, uh, Tim Kane, uh, Robert Scott, uh, A, uh, Mick, uh, Aiklin, Aiklin, Donald Breyer, uh, H. Griffith, uh, Gerald McConley, Or Ger Ger Gerald Connolly, I should say. Sorry. Uh, Washington, uh, Maria Cantwell, uh, Patty Murray, Rick Larson, Derek Kilmer, uh, Denny Heck. None in West Virginia, and uh, Wisconsin's actually safe, and so is Wyoming. But it still shows that basically there's quite a few when we start going through from state to state. And that this is why, uh, this is why it's, uh, we go over these awards and it's very very important and uh why i'm going to do my best to keep over these year by year and i want to make sure that uh people kind of get the point of this and if i can i want to make sure that uh, we can do it year by year so we can get uh the idea of how the votes are coming in if people are doing a little bit better of a job uh, if uh, some of the uh, inputs are coming in for some of the people who are newly sworn in, if they have some inputs in there, then I will use that. Then uh, if not, then we'll do it every other year because that'll be a little more accurate uh, because we can do that for people like that. Uh, and that will determine how we actually apply this because I don't know how exactly I'm going to apply this with, uh, with this. Um, because otherwise we're going to have to change it around a little bit. Uh, it'll depend on how we get for the input because we can get the input uh, by next uh, March for the uh, next one. We can actually do this and make sure that we have the people who are necessary for the next uh, round of these uh, awards and I would really appreciate that to happen and it would be really nice for a lot of people to see uh, the improvements, what people see if, if people can improve their numbers, see if some more people can jump on that list, see if, see which, uh, which people bump off the list and see how it goes. And uh, we're probably just gonna end it right here with it, with this being the end of the award show. Uh, check out my Patreon, 
Make sure to uh, like, subscribe, click the notification bell on all this stuff. And uh, if you can't donate to the Patreon, share it with somebody who can. And this is going to end the award show. I hope everyone likes this. And we will do this as uh, often as we can. And that's about it. And bye, everyone.